Cracker here because he's going to face off against the other Civ high on the rise in popularity and success. It's the Abbasids. Meanwhile, Wham will take to Baltic under the flag of the Mongols. And I like this choice. Going for the Mongols is a really effective Civ option in these water maps. It's not apparent immediately though and shout out to Anatand for apparently being a fan and coming through the raid I see and appreciate you I think Mongols might be the future of water maps and something that got revealed to us on the weekend something that they've been neglected for a long time is the value of piracy in painfully long feudal water engagements piracy costs 350 resources but in return once you have it Every ship you sink is worth 50 resources. That does include demo ships that your opponent detonates themselves. So you shoot them once and they detonate, you still get paid. It's basically a tax rebate for playing water. And the Mongols are the only Civ that gets it. Now, do I think long term the English can beat them out, right? With their additional range, with their cheaper ships? Possibly. But I think even in that dynamic, as we see the meta evolve, Mongols have an edge in terms of the way that they can kind of punish you for uh, proxy docks and, you know, far away ones that simply aren't in TC range, which, you know, you can see by this generation. Let's say I'm a Mongol player and I build a few horsemen. I'm getting in here. I'm torching your dock. That can be very problematic. So don't just think that the English are going to roll through the Mongols either. Of course, the big issue is piracy takes a while to pay off. Like I said, it's 350 resources. So you need to to return the cost of investment, sink seven boats. And also, although that doesn't sound like a high number, keep in mind that when you go 350 resources into piracy now, uh, you're sacrificing a boat and a half now. Or, you know, I see in fairness, you're being on a war junk, you're sacrificing a war junk, right? And that can matter a lot. Like in the early game, especially when you're a neck and neck in terms of skill and timings, that puts you one whole boat behind. A good player is going to leverage that. So you always have to look for the timing window. Mongols will typically go for piracy after they find a small winner mortar because they can afford to at that phase. Let's see if you can get to that phase. Obviously, we are very early on the game. Another potential option, of course, on a map like Baltic is trade, something that both of these sieves do phenomenally well, considering that the Abbasids can go in the trade wing and get it for free. And the Mongols can easily just go into the silver tree and basically just bump up the numbers because of stone. Right? Like they have no other use for stone in these kind of generations. We'll see if that's going to be an option here, though. Typically, most Mongol players on Baltic, especially, will go Deer Stone. Just the extra movement speed. Right? Just gives you a more efficient gathering rate on the wood. Allows you to split up a little bit better onto maybe the gold. Uh, admittedly, this generation is horrific for getting gold plus wood. There is a spot here on the Deer Stone, though. But it'll become uh, kind of irrelevant for the wood line quite quickly. In fairness, though, you just don't really need your gold included underneath the deer stone, right? They have a very short walk distance. It is nice to have the deer stone on the side uh, or influence on the side of your TC where your villagers are walking towards gold simply so that they get to work quicker. Some people saying that they really like the two trade, uh, H2 trade wing into Fast Castle. I've said it before. If you want to go Fast Castle Age as the Abbasids, depending on the map, of course, you need at least like a half distance trade. But most maps, trade wing is the quickest way to get Castle Age. Quicker than Culture Wing by a landslide. As long as obviously your opponent doesn't have 20 horsemen already. But typically when you have Trade Wing coming in as an age 2, your opponent doesn't have any units to block your trade. And your initial trade at half map should at least be like 50 gold. If you get 50 gold each, boom. All of a sudden you've got like 150 gold there. Let's compare it on the other side. If I go Culture Wing, so going Culture Wing to uh, rather going uh, yeah Culture Wing to then go to Castle Age, I'm gonna save myself uh, 360 resources. But to save that 360 resources from preservation of knowledge, I have to spend 175 resources. This is always that thing that gets missing out of people's calculations. So the real number that you're saving is drastically lower than what you actually think you're saving. You're only saving 185 resources in the end. And what did I do say about trade? Even a crap trade probably gets you 150 gold. And the difference between Preservation of knowledge and trade wing is your opponent has to respond to trade wing or it keeps happening. But we are going to see it in this game. Vortex is on his way towards the trade wing. And for good reason. This is why I said it I was expecting on Baltic. Look how far you can go. Not only that, Wham is also going for his own special kind of trade wing. We're getting the silver tree. And he has got the Uvu set up. This is going to be important. Look at the timing. 
Wan will instantly be into double trader production. It's very crucial that he has this timing as well. And you know that Wham anticipated this because he scouted out. I believe that the, the trade was happening. Even if he didn't scout out, he should expect it. And by timing this the way he did on the delayed Uvu, he gets the most out of fishing and water while not missing his double trader production. He needs to straight away if he wants to stand a chance of keeping up with the free that the Abbasids immediately get at the beginning of the tech up. And the cool thing about this timing from Wham, by the way, is that he should have, well, I was about to say, he should have packed up instantly. He would have been able to be only a few seconds behind uh, Vortex's traders leaving the base. By the way, cool little thing, like sometimes you read into it too much, but something to keep in mind if you're suspicious that there might be uh, a trade play coming, but you, you can't hang around long enough to see the wing, is if you're up against an Abbasi player and you see them build the House of Wisdom, on the opposite side of their TC to where the neutral trade post is located, it's actually a really good read that they are likely going to be trading. Especially if it's a long distance trade option already like this. I mean, this is probably going to be like an 80 gold. Maybe 90, actually. Wait, what? Well, actually, it's 90 low. I feel like this is maybe 100. Meanwhile, in the Legion of Wham. Wait, is he... Is he going to set up a marketplace? Okay, I did not expect this out of Wham. So, so he spent the stone on Spearman instead. He's looking to block out the trade of Vortex. Vortex so far has nothing to address this on land. Okay, I did not expect that out of Wham. I thought he was going to get his own greed, but he says, it's not enough that I get my own greed. You need to be blocked to your own. Well, though, Vortex does get the edge in terms of aggression because of this Spearman play. Spiral ships are now going to arrive. Archer ships are being targeted out, but fishing boat is being taken down. At the moment, Vortex should be able to contain Wham. Even activate this. Did he activate the sails there? It looked like he was moving pretty damn fast. I'm going to get the archer ship. The Khan has got eyes on, and we are looking at a 99 gold trade. Probably too late for Wham to stop it. If he gets around quickly with all four spearmen, I, I can see a world in which he actually blocks here. He probably kills one of the traders. I expect the other two to get through. And you can see the way that Wham's done this. He targets the one at the back. This is a cool play because now what's going to happen is when you run in, there's going to be a traffic jam. These front traders are going to get in the way of the back one. They will probably get through, but they're going to hold the back one away longer so that the Khan can continuously whittle at him. Wham has got that trade option, but yet to go for it. Still needs to get more units on the sea. This should be the charging. New arrows should be activated here. Wham. He cancelled the trade. He got the trade to cancel. Okay. Wham. Like, he maybe would have considered the dive if he saw the goal was still going, but Vortex. He got spooked. He actually cancelled the trade. He's got nothing out of this so far. Oh, that's bad. That's really, really bad. Now, if, if, yeah, as I say, if you're Wham, you just set up the marketplace and you start now. Delaying him this long is worth it. You also forced him to go into archers. He added four archers. You've only added four spearmen. And remember, part of that was passive stone cost. But Wham isn't done there. He's now going for more land aggression. And more Vortex. Might feel confident about the size of his fleet, but he shouldn't for long. Wham is keeping decent pace with him. Sure, he's behind by two, but there's already two more in production. And by the way, the, the reason why the archer investment is, is critical here compared to spearman investment is like you both have a lot of food. The wood is the more strenuous element of your eco. And what Wham done here is he forced Vortex to invest in the harder to reach resource at this stage. Wood. The scout gets the bad news, so Vortex now knows exactly what Wham's up to. Needs to make a choice here. Do I fully protect the trade or do I go elsewhere? Do I go for a sea assault? Vortex right now is distracted. I mean, now luckily for him, Wham just has all aggro on. Otherwise, he would have lost both spears and probably two traders. Instead, it'll just be one. Both archers rather not both spears. Speaking of spears, next run over here. And I, I'm starting to wonder what's happening to Vortex here. He's a little bit late on the reactions in multiple areas. He does still lose the archer to the final spearman. He's at least going to get through with two traders. So it's going to be 200 gold. But on the other side of the map, Wham is now trading. It's 
a statement as old as time itself in the community. And he's not going to be trading cheap. 102 gold per trader. In the same time. But not the same time frame. They're going to get the same amount of gold. But it took Vortex twice as long. Oof, can't. Uh, this is... Uh, you, you, I know you've got a bow and a horse. But no. He's going to lose that. Was distracted because of the water side. A push in. Oh, that demo push. He shuffled him away. Wham. He just saved himself for that fishing boat play. The demo got body blocked and then got nudged away. That was a really cool little play. And now he's got emplacement, so breaching this is much more difficult. We haven't seen Paris yet, Wham. He's taking a very turtly approach because he's not relying on water for aggro yet. And I don't mind this, right? Like, the way this has played out, he's forced so much land investment from Vortex to defend. He can now just slowly boom up trade and then try to obliterate water. And when he's ready to do that, he'll be ready with piracy, which is a, cre a key ingredient we were talking about. It's now on the way. Horsemen are looking to be a nuisance, and they will be for this trade. There's still Spearman out here, by the way. Vortex invested in two more archers, but now that he sees those horsemen, he can't just run them out freely. So what happens? Well, Vortex has to go and add in Spearman also. I think Wham was just one step ahead on pretty much everything here. The only upside I do see for Vortex is his dock escalation. Some of the bastards can do easily because, you know, 500, uh, 500 wood for five docks compared to 450 wood for three docks. It's an easy investment. But he needs to use it fast. And Vortex with it all in. Maximum demo ships on the way. Start step back. Archers need to target them out. And in fact, he's getting his own in his own way right now. Ignores the fishing boats to go on through. The demos. Looking for that maximum value. And Wham returning fire, but not finding the maximum pain. However, the emplacement should keep him alive. But it's too late for the fleet. Spring ships go down. Fishing ships are heavily impacted. But remember, folks, these dive-ins. Well, they are actually serving Wham. He is getting paid for this. And after all is said and done, Vortex, he does take control of water. But this is one of those rare situations where I'm saying it's not enough. I mean, unless he can get through these docks, it's not going to win it for him. Wham! He's still aggroing land. And now he's switching the script, right? He's forcing you elsewhere. You always feel like you have to reinvest on this water side because you know more is coming. It's going to take a lot more demo ships to address this threat. Finally able to get through on the docks. Does get the scroll ship out just before that, though. Needs to respect these emplacements. That damage is going to add up fast. But wham. Once again, just no, never in a position to get the archer ships. I mean, Vortex, this is the thing we know he's so good at. Vortex and Lucifron, they are masters of war. They proved it in round two. He's proving it again here in round three. But wham is not out of moves. Heavy hit in return. And as we already stated, wham is not making this simply a water affair anymore. He's made it a land affair. And he's going to the fun fair here. That trade account is up to eight. And it's escalating. And so far, Vortex has only chilled. He's not come out to play at all. He can't. Horsemen are going to be thrown away, but I mean, look at these archers. Force the time on the gold. Now, this is very cool what Wham's done here. He's blocking any potential for like a Castle Age timing out of Vortex. Because if Vortex is going to start losing on land, his only backup option is to play Castle Age. At the moment, he will continue to dominate on the water, though. Well, I'm now reduced to one dock going, if Mongols can pack up their buildings, why can't they pack up their docks? No, just no. I shouldn't give relic ideas. But hear me out, guys. What if I could pack up my dock, move it across the map, put an emplacement in it, and then uh, unpack it? Okay, I'm going to stop now. I feel like I've got a bad idea every day to give over. It's almost like a skill at this point. We're focused on Wham skills. Just a small archer mass. Still being a nuisance. Well, Vortex, I see a lack of defenses here. He's now forced to go into the stables. He's yet to get horsemen out. And his archers... Are... Did they go aggro? Where... Where are they? They're just dead. Double stables now. I, If I'm Wham and I'm seeing this, I feel fairly confident. Like, I've lost water and usually that's just GG. But I'm trading. And as we all know, trading is vile. It is disgusting. It is an inevitable storm upon your games. One that will blow you away. 
Wham, he's not fully done with water yet. Snakes two more docks up. Vortex, it's getting problematic what I'm seeing with his eco now. Like he's moving further and further out into dangerous territory. The reason he's playing south instead of going for the second tree line, by the way, is because so far Wham keeps coming from the north. So he's paranoid. Finally, Vortex does clean up the last of the aggro force. Wham's not done there. We can see more horsemen coming. Also, he got a chance to kind of re-establish, and if I'm not mistaken, I thought Vortex saw that, but I, I don't think he did. He's patrolling all the wrong places right now. Is Wham going to be a... No. Is Wham going to get to build a bigger fleet without being seen here? Quite possibly, which is absurd to say when you consider that Vortex has five docks. Wham... He's going to jump the gun a bit here. I think he could have waited longer than this. He's going to reveal his hand. Vortex is going to end up losing two archer ships for it, but it means he gets time to react, and you see the reaction. Four more demos on the way. As soon as he got access to that gold, he understood exactly where it needs to go. His archer ships, however, will be going to the depths of Baltic. Never to be seen again. And Wham is going to Moon with Mongol Coin. 112 gold. I want to say we're at 16 traders. 19. And it's not slowing down. Neither is the land aggro. Vortex tries to secure the flank, but too little too late. So this is going to be kept open. And Vortex, folks, he did not really go hardcore on the land side, right? Eight archers, three horsemen. He be dancing around his own base for a while. Demos are coming out. Archer ships here to counter out the play intended by Vortex. Chase will commence. Meanwhile, land aggro as well. Notice this. Wham, playing Vortex, his own signature game on water maps, drawing his attention to multiple places at once. Wham, he's going to lose a lot of boats again. But <laughs> I mean, I say he's playing him his own game. I'll be real on this. Like, water micro from Wham, he's getting, he's getting kind of like juggled, right? He's getting outplayed. But macro game from Wham, Vortex is getting outplayed. Just look at the numbers. 700, 1,000 here, right? The food as well. And, and by the way, I want you to see these numbers, remembering that Vortex has full water control. He has all the fishing he could ever desire, and yet the numbers are this close. And they will continue to get closer and closer until eventually Vortex is surpassed. Because he'll never reach a point where he can safely trade with the other side until he blocks out all these docks indefinitely. That's exactly what he's trying to do now. Wham. Looking to get outposts up to stabilize. Demo ship is on the way. If he gets a heavy hit here, which he might well do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Close, but no cigar. Less than half a tile away from maximum pain. But Vortex quick on the reaction. And demos will clean up the docks once more. But folks, I mean, I can't believe I'm sad. Like typically I'd be like, well, that's GG. There's no way you come back. But Wham hasn't built his base near the shores, so you can't, like, you know, you can't naval barrage it. And also, I, I don't see Vortex trading on water anytime soon. Now, did he at least... No, he still hasn't got the walls up. This is the bigger fear for me. Like, if you don't complete these walls, you won't feel comfortable in this game. And also, like, the other thing to consider is, you know, you see this ridiculous military pop cap, but most of this is now irrelevant in that if Wham is just going to play land then actually, he's ahead. So Vortex, what will he do? He'll get more value out of the full sea control now. We are seeing the extended lines. Now, this is the point where if you're in Vortex's shoes, a good move is simply to go Castle Age. You should have the resource pool in the next minute. And then the next minute after that, like the arsenal you build, you're about to build up an army. You're, like, you're not going to be weak. We need to be fast. Because you know you're kind of on the clock here, especially when the trade continues behind this, because Wham could easily be doing the same. In fact, you look at that resource bank, that's exactly what he's doing. It's a Castle Age race. And it's one that Wham's going to win with easily a two-minute advantage. Once again, these bloody walls never going up. More infrastructure for Vortex as well. I, I think he's intending to stay here. Oh my god. And this is crazy because typically they say you know, whoever goes cast laser in these type of maps loses. 
But Wyoming has weirdly not found a way to do this, to, to make himself not reliant on the fish like so many players often are. Surprise, surprise. It's just how powerful that trade is. Skrull tie complete. Just the blink of the eyes. And Vortex now with the bad news. He was beginning to hoard. He might even contemplate trading over if he wants a quicker time in, but it's only so quick you can make it as the Abbasids. You're still going to be almost two minutes away from Castle Age, and that is a very long time when you consider how strong Wham's Eco is. Four knights already on the way. Vortex needs those walls up. The good news for Vortex fans, Wham has no way back onto water bar building siege. And that's a big investment to make at this stage. Vortex is now starting to surge. But what feels like a waste of time on the, these outposts is forced by the layering of Wham's base. Wham also now going for a TC behind all of this. The land greed just keeps on coming through, but it's what he needs to keep up. However, Vortex, he's looking for trade. Instead, he's going to find a town center unbuilt. It just gets better and better for him. The pushback, wow, may even have to consider maybe canceling this as a dangerous one to try and continue. Especially if this diving commences. Vortex now idling out Wham in his primary. Millie Wing just 30 seconds away. Flood through commences as Vortex makes his way towards the trade. But always chased, always pursued with a Yam behind their back. Wham is able to stay on top of him. And with no siege investment from Vortex due to a lack of wood, he has no way of idling his TC, of forcing everything back. Wham still has an opportunity here. Vortex 10 seconds out from Castle Age, but a long way away from Anti-Armor. Now with the TC up, with his horseman raid, really achieving little to nothing, but like killing what, maybe one or two traders maximum. Wham, now packing up that curl type, getting it in position. The perfect situation, the perfect scenario to be turtling in. With a 25% damage buffer. Vortex needs to act fast, but he also needs to act with certainty. The keep drop will give him a stabilization point. The Lancer mass being produced behind this will give him the breach. But it's not going to be an easy breach. Wham, more outposts going up. And pushing on the secondary town center. Reaction now coming out from the men at arms. Flank attack is on the way, but it is going to be delayed by the walls. But once they break through, Vortex is completely undefended here. All of his infrastructure got built on the south side of his base. All of his army is on a foreign affair right now. An invasion plan, if you will. I wonder if Vortex should have been trading this whole time. He's had water for a while now, but we haven't seen a single trader come out. Probably felt like it wasn't worth it, right? Like half distance, you're basically playing up against a better form of trade, it feels like, because the traders are going maximum distance and giving 175 gold. In fact, in total, they're giving over 200 resources. And this, this is what I was waiting for. Kurultai, a fight you don't want to take, but Vortex is forced to. Men at arms tanky, and also with bonus damage. The Lance is able to cut through it. Castle going up behind this, but the Springle Towers are adding in so much damage to this. I don't, I don't think he holds. Especially with the dive pass now. Wham understands the position perfectly. Men at arms in. The army's too small. This castle looks doomed to just be an incomplete structure. Maybe he can get it. It's going to be tight, though. Final taps of the hammers come through. The body blocks are good, and Vortex gets the keep. But now he needs to be fast into the siege. Wham has already shown that he's a step ahead in that regard. Siege being pushed out, and this is important, folks. Traction trebuchets, a laughable element in the old days in small quantities. But now, with the Kurosai, they hit like a beast. 400 damage almost from one shot. You see it. Kurultai not a meme anymore because now it buffs bonus damage by 
Good lordy. The Vortex. I mean, he might have to buy in the stone. You see, he just booted up a bunch. So he's munching on that stone outcropping because he understands he's going to need a big repair crew. The problem, however, is because Wham took out so many villages, he doesn't have enough to repair this. Especially now that there's a second trap in the mix. Once Wham decides to use it, of course. I'm just looking back at this. I'm wondering, like, what if? It's kind of like the what if you could have killed the Khan type moment, I think. Maybe that would have been the play actually here for Vortex with the Lancers. But he was so paranoid about whether it was even possible getting that castle. Cool tight, ready to rock and roll. Bonus damage back in place. Double treb. To breach. And then you have to wonder, does Vortex have what it takes to hold here? Not sure, but he at least has what it takes to raid elsewhere. Lancers have made their way to the backside. And Wham is going to be forced to pivot and respond. So Cavalry on the way. But now Vortex, like a bloody octopus here. Here, there, and everywhere. One attack is simply not enough. But this second attack is going to be too weak. So many Sprinkle Towers. Castle not long for this world. And a girl that is seemingly tanking all of the castle fire the entire while. Castle gone. Springles were being built up. Um, is going to be forced to respond. And I mean, this feels like a Hasper retreat, right? Like Vortex, there's no way. Into a choke point. He'll hesitate. Springles have to be cancelled. Remember, he's not only getting healed, he's getting extra 25% damage. Lots of numbers are looking good, though. The Abbasids. With that Phalanx, they're able to bite back, but they need to take this fight away from the Kurultai. This has been the, the bane of Vortex's existence. This is his Kryptonite. He still doesn't have trebuchets. He still has no way of threatening this Kurultai. And if he cannot force Wan to pack it up, well, he can't force him to pack it up and go map free. Once again, the breach. A <laughs> cheeky villager trying to cut through. As Wan has been blocked from uh, raids on this flank anymore. No stone walls on the south, though. Vortex now transitioning to a land eco with the second TC. I mean, it's actually crazy how much traders kept Wham in this game. Just look at the numbers. His gold is through the roof, which which has me keenly concerned for Vortex, right? Like, this has been part of the issue of why you didn't see him drop a keep, drop a siege workshop, and then get free trebs out. He simply didn't have the gold. He chose Lancers instead, which I don't disagree with the choice, but... It shows you that you know, food is great, but because of the way that Wham bolstered his eco behind all this, because it wasn't just you have the advantage of water, he had the advantage somewhere else. Once you reach this later point, you know, the fishing just ain't all as cracked up to be, right? Not compared to Mongol trade. Oh, he has still got half of his traders not being efficient here, though. I'm not sure if Wham's going to notice that anytime soon either. It's very deceptive. The best way to ensure this doesn't happen, by the way, folks, is just pack up the marketplace and move to the corner as well. Raids in again. This is one of the frustrations when you play Mongols at the stage, right? These raids are always going to happen. You can outpost spam up the wazoo, but you need quite a few with screwing placements to stop cavalry from running past. So that is going to split Wham's attention. But Kuratai makes it like you've got an extra 25% army on. Mango hit in. A big one. Wham. Delayed in his response. But his return fire not too bad considering Vortex doesn't have much to aim at right now. He needs to be very careful with this. He's up against Yam and Kurultai buff. Siege could easily be gap closed. I think I've done the numbers on this with Spriggle before as well. It's an interesting one because Spriggles they do... What was it? 100 damage. 25. Uh, will the spring would increase damage? Yeah. I'm I'm pretty yeah, that is that a one hit? Or is that one look? That's a one hit. That's disgust okay, that's disgusting. So I done the numbers for clock tower springles before. Where because typically it would take you three springle shots to kill, but with curl tie it takes two. But with curl tie springles. Oh man, that's just disgusting. It only takes you one shot.
it's actually disgusting how close it is as well, right? Like, you're seeing those numbers. It's 126 damage. Springles have 125 health. <laughs> oh my god, this landmark is actually... There's so many layers to it. I fear crafted a bunch of them, but like, you see how... There's so many extra things to be discovered for this. Like, there's so many things that are still being figured out. But mark my words, folks, Kuratai is going to keep rising. Especially considering that Silver Tree is still bloody good. Oh, you're right, actually. The Springles ignore 20, don't they? Sorry, you're, you are correct. Thank you, Ormrixia. Uh, because the Siege damage goes through pure, but the Springle base is ranged. You are correct. Okay, that's a bit more reasonable then, because that would be busted. But, by the way, little tip. This still, my, my point around Clock Tower Springles still stands. Clock Tower Springles that usually take three shots to kill will take two. <laughs> Which is uh, a big buff up against the Chinese with the Mongols. Yeah, even then, I mean, that bonus damage of 25%, it puts you low enough that it's quite easy for just one round of, ar uh, like, Archer Fire to kill it off, right? I think it is still an important factor in these fights. Let's just see. Skrill's moving in. That's the micro wham. That's the back away when the second wave of horsemen comes in. That's actually a lot of ponies. Skrill's not going to engage. And I mean, this is just a sacrifice right now. This is not a good way to use your horsemen. Wham, quick on the retreat and Vortex. Fighting into 25% damage buff units that were already stinging you with spears. And he just threw away the siege as well. I mean, this commitment by Vortex. I think he completely misread this fight. He thought that the horsemen were going to be enough to cover the castle. He was dead wrong. He'll lose the springles. The Trebs are now going to hit in, and I think they will instantly kill the keep. Well, it may not have crumbled the castle, but it crumbled Vortex. He actually calls GG there. The Cruel Tie, nigh on unbreachable. Wham! Will win 2 0.